Hey guys, it's Jalen. Welcome or welcome back. Today I am excited to share with you a new project that I'm starting with several other ladies. This is going to be called Get Your Craft On. So Andrea started a project yarnathon, I think in January of this year. And that like I got really excited whenever I saw that and I was like, I'm, immediately I knew I, that I was going to do it. And I've posted maybe I think three or four videos so far this year. But my knitting mojo has come back like full force. It is here. And I'm so excited because I have so much yarn and I need to work through it. So one of the things that I wanted to do is something that I have done in like several, several years ago, back in, I think, September of 2015 and 2016, I did a project called Cast On Mania. And it's where you cast on one project every day of the month. This was and I had to go back and do a little bit of research, but this project concept idea was actually started in a group on Ravelry. Now Ravelry is a like yarny website. <laughs> it's a place for you to be able to like keep track of your projects, your stash, the patterns that you want to knit, etc. It's a great database. And I joined like when it first started back in 2006 or something. I can't remember. But Cast On Mania was actually started in the Village Hopelessly Overcommitted group. And they've been doing this project for 13 years. Or something like that. Like at least 10 years. Minimum 10 years. So I had this idea in my head that I wanted to do this project again, where I wanted to start a new knitting or yarn related project every day of the month in January. That's what this project is, by the way. So I reached out to one of the moderators of that group and got their blessing to do Get Your Craft On on YouTube. Kind of rewinding a little bit. I actually mentioned this idea to a couple of other people that are friends of mine that knit and crochet, etc. And they like like crazy people like me decided to join in. <laughs> so the folks that are joining in are Andrea at Pretty as a Peacock, Danny at Danny's Makeup, Kim at Teacher Loves Beauty, and Shelly at Unapologetically Shelly. They are the four folks who are like joining in to this craziness. Anybody is welcome to join. We're actually filming this a bit early on the 19th of December, because we want to make sure that people who may be interested in participating in joining the crazy train can hop on and find projects that they want to work on, like from between now and the end of the year. So we're starting on January 1st. The goal, as I mentioned, is to start a new project every day of the month. It can be knitting, crochet, spinning, weaving, card making, diamond painting, cross stitching, it can be any craft. It does not have to be specifically yarn related craft. It can be any craft. That's why we decided to go with get your craft on. So hopefully I explained everything. One thing I will say, so as I mentioned, we're starting January 1st with the actual like cast this this first day for you to start a project is January 1st. You can prepare as much as you need to leading up to it. So as an example, as a knitter, I have a couple of sweaters that I'm working on that or that I plan on casting on. So I've already knit gauge swatches to see like, do I need do I have the right needles ready to go so that I don't have to do that the day of me wanting to start the project. It's just ready for me to, you know, the, the yarn is wound and the project is ready to go. I can cast on right away. OK, so that is the introduction. What I'm doing today is I'm going to share with you the projects that I have picked out, the yarn that I have picked out, etc. And I've kind of broken this up into types of projects. So like sweater project, blankets, etc. So again, there's 31 days in the month of January. So I have 31 projects here. I'm going to start with sweaters because I actually have four sweaters. I originally had three, but then I found one not just today that I have put had the yarn I had put in a bag, but I never started. So we're going to do four sweaters or I'm going to do four sweaters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the, the knitting bag that it's in or the project bag that it's in the yarn that I have and the pattern. The first sweater project, by the way, I have four. I think I mentioned I have four right now. The first sweater project is going in um, before I forget. 
I will also put a picture of what the project, like the finished object looks like here. So you can see the projects I'm doing. The first sweater project is Heartfelt by Vera Valimaki. And I have, this is the one that I had kind of set aside a while ago. I don't know what's going on with this yarn. It's kind of tangled. It's a tangly mess. I bet you Ziggy got in here. But I have a sweater quantity of this gorgeous green yarn. This is, I mean, and I have a lot of old yarn, guys. Like none of this is going to be like new stuff that you can buy right now because I've got a lot of old stuff. This is Sundara Sock Yarn and the shade is Jungle Boogie. This is actually, I think, part of a yarn club that she had a long time ago. I think I've had this at least probably eight years. So here we go. There's, again, I think I have five, four to five skeins of this. And yeah, I wanna make the heartfelt sweater. So I'm super excited. Here's my bag. Well, let me turn it around. Here's my project bag. This was gifted to me by a friend of mine, Tom York Dance Moves or Dance Guide from Radiohead. I love it. All right. So that's project number one. And I don't know which day I'm going to cast on these. I'm just going to pick one out of, oh, by the way, I'm going to pick one out of my basket. And here's a big basket that I got from World Market. I freaking love this. It's actually you know, like that hyacinth type basket. So it looks like knitting stitches. It's this basket is giant. It's perfect. So my thought is I'm just going to pull projects out of that bag and out of that basket and cast on. The next sweater I have, this is going to be Buckwheat by Vera Valamaki. Sorry. And the yarn that I chose for this one is also by Sundara. It's this beautiful cobalt blue yarn. This is a sport merino and it's 100% superwash merino. I didn't mention the last one I showed you was fingering weight yarn and it's superwash merino. The shade is cobalt over Mediterranean. I think this used to be a standard color for her, but yeah, this is gorgeous. So I have like six or seven balls of this and the bag that I'm using is a really old and discolored plucky bag. It's got a lot of, I need to wash this bag, but it's got a lot of pins on here that I've kind of put on the bag over the years. But yeah, this one is going to be sweater number two. Now I do need to get a couple of, a couple more zippered bags because what Ziggy tends to do, I mentioned this in my project Yarnathon, is he likes to take the balls of yarn out of my bag and play with them and bunny kick them and ruin them. So these need to be in a sealed bag. So I will go on Ravelry and try to find, no, I'm sorry, go on Etsy and try to find a couple more sweater, like bags for sweater quantity yarn. I bought a couple recently, but I need two more. And this is actually one of my newer purchased bags. This, look at the, look at their sheeps. Look at the sheepies. Oh, I die. It's so cute. It's got, it's a drawstring bag. And this is what it looks like when it's, oh, I'm dead. Look at how cute those sheepies are. Okay, this one is going to be the Easy Folded Poncho Pattern by Church Mouse Yarns. Church Mouse is actually a knitting and tea store. It's actually Church Mouse Yarns and Teas. It's a knitting like yarn and tea store that I've actually been to in, oh my God, where are they? They're in Washington, Bainbridge Island in Washington state. I have been there. I actually have a very, very good friend that I met through the knitting community who lives in Seattle. And we went to Seattle and anytime I visit her, it's almost like we always have to go to Bainbridge Island to go to this yarn store because it's adorable. Anyway, so I'm doing a poncho. I've never knit a poncho before. I've kind of been wanting a poncho. So I decided to use this yarn. This is by Rowan. It's their felted tweed. It's a beautiful tweedy yarn. This is in the shade Scree, I think. Yes, yeah, Scree, S-C-R-E-E. -E. I love this yarn so much and I think it's going to be a beautiful, warm, cozy poncho. So yeah, I have a ton of this in here and that's what we're gonna do with this yarn. I'm so excited, I've had this yarn forever and I'm just stoked to be knitting it up. 
So that is the third sweater. Sweater number four is in this adorable bag. This is also a new purchase. If I remember, remind myself, Jalon, to link these in the, like the stores that I got these from, the Etsy shops, I will link them down below. I don't know, this one has a tag here. Longview Creations. This sheepy bag is from, ooh, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. I'll link it down below. Oh, right here. JD Studios 480. So I'll link both these Etsy shops down below. But this is going to be The Weekender by Andrea Mowry. This is the, like, worsted weight version. And I have wanted, I wanted it both the worsted weight version and the fingering weight version of this sweater. But what I'm going to do this time is the worsted weight version worsted actually this I think this is an Aaron weight sweater so I makes sense because I'm using an Aaron weight yarn this is Queensland collection Kathmandu Aaron in this gorgeous beautiful color I don't think it tells me the color name it just gives a number color 127 oh my gosh I remember when this kind of like went away for a little while it's back now so there's my bag of Kathmandu Erin. I have several sweater quantities of this, not in this color, but a similar color. And then one other purple, I think. But yeah, this is a gorgeous yarn. And here's my gauge swatch just to show you how this knits up. Oh, I love it. It's so nice and soft. So yeah, this is going to be the weekender. So those are my four sweaters. Now moving on to, I'm going to do the, the other category that's a large... <laughs> fo and that's blankets so i have three blankets i want to cast on for the first one is actually a recast on so i started like i started by knitting one square several years ago but i realized after i had started it that i started with the wrong color so the pattern for this is the hue shift blanket it's i think it's on knit picks website and i had purchased a ton of madeline tosh sport weight yarn so these are the colors that i have in the bag right now here one two three <laughs> so here are the here are the five colors that I have already wound up, but I'm thinking I'm supposed to start with the black. And I start with, started with the red. And you can't, this is a pattern, and here's my little red square. But I think I'm supposed to start with the black. So I need to rip this out and start a new one with the black because this is a pattern where you knit a square and then you pick up the next, next square on the square you've already knit. So I can't just like seam them together. So this is going to be a recast on and I need to find that black yarn and wind it up. So Jalen, remind yourself to wind up that yarn. <laughs> the next blanket is going to be the Granny Stripe blanket. And this one I actually have in this gorgeous bag. This is Marameco fabric. I love this so much. I love Marameco fabric. This pattern, there was a version knit in Madeline Tosh, uh, Tosh Marina Light, which is what I'm going to knit it up with. And I'm starting with, and I decided, I think the pattern originally calls for one main color and one contrasting color. However, I am going to use all like different colors in each stripe section and have the one main contrast color. I don't have the yarn for that one yet. That's going to be like a gray color, but this is the first color I'm starting with is this beautiful purple. I think this one is called Hollyhock. A lot of the Metal and Tosh colors have been discontinued that I have, but I have four here that I'm going to use. And I so I need to purchase five more and I have them in my cart. I like to buy Mad Tosh yarn from Metal and Tosh yarn from Eat Sleep Knit. I will link their website down below. But here are the four other colors that I have set aside that I already own. So here's the beautiful color. So I think I have a couple of, I have a, a bright red, a bright orange, a bright blue. That's that gray, the silver gray that I was mentioning. 
as the contrast. What else do I have in my cart? Like a bright purple and a like mustardy yellow. So those are the additional five colors that I have in my cart. I may change my mind about that, but that's what I have so far. And I'm excited. So there's going to be each one of these skeins will be, cro this is a crocheted project. Each skein will be crocheted into a section and then I'll use the contrast color to separate the different colors out. I saw somebody years ago crocheting this blanket with different colors of, t of Tosh Marina Light and I was like, I'm doing that. So this has been a project that I've wanted to start for years. We're going to be here a while guys, by the way. I didn't say, but grab a drink. The last blanket that I'm going to do is actually going to be a granny, what, what was the pattern called? Another granny stripe blanket. This one's also crochet, but this one is using scraps. It's a different pattern, but similar concept in terms of it being crochet and stripes. But each row is a different color. I believe it's each row or each two rows is a different color. Milo scratching his scratching post. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be using leftover sock yarn. I am a huge fan of knitting socks. I love to knit socks. I have so many and I have, therefore I have a lot of sock yarn scraps. So that's fingering weight, hundred percent superwash merino. And what I do is I save them in this beautiful, like, I think it's actually a pie box because it's got a little, a level, um, it's got a divider here where you can stack two pies on top of each other. And what I do is, is if I open this up, I can show you, I keep all of my sock yarn scraps here. I don't, I think I have some underneath. So I do here, let me show you. So you can see this hole here. If you lift this up, and I'm gonna get yarn everywhere, I knew it. Ziggy's gonna be so happy. So here's the thing in the middle, the one that divides the, the pie box into two, and then I have all this yarn in here. So I want to, I need to knit the stuff up. Like it needs to be, I mean, there is so much flipping yarn in here. This one doesn't even look like I've touched it. Did I, did I knit this into something? I don't know. So my goal is to just pick a yarn from in here and I'll probably grab a handful at a time and put them in a bag and crochet one row with the color and then swap it out for something different. I've got to use these scraps up. I'm already working on a scrappy blanket now and I've been working on it for 10 years. Hopefully because I'm not seaming it together, this will just be knit on the project. It won't take as long, but yeah, it is, it's going to be a long-term project. I know that, but that is what's going to be my third blanket. One thing I didn't mention is some of these actually were incorporated into the granny's granny, not the granny, the crocheted squared blanket that I talked about in my project yarnathon. I'll link it up below, link it here. I'll link it here and below. And so some of them will be duplicates, but there is plenty to choose from. And I'm going to only focus on semi-solids. I'm not going to incorporate any of my variegated or self-striping leftovers because I'm going to do something different with those. All right, what's next? <laughs> the rest of these are smaller projects. So I'm going to go ahead and start with socks. I have seven pairs of socks that I plan on casting on during the cast, this uh, Get Your Craft On project. So the first one I have is in this beautiful project bag. Looks like cherry blossoms. And this is going to be just a simple vanilla sock. I have some self-striping yarn here. Here is what this looks like. This is by the brand Canon. Canon Hand Dyes. This is in the colorway Rainbow Drops. It's part of the Charlie and Chocolate Factory collection. This was dyed in June of 2015. Long time ago. <laughs> so anyway, this was actual, this is going to be, like I said, plain vanilla socks. Just, you know, I knit vanilla socks all the time. I typically do them toe up with an afterthought heel. I, this soap, this skein of yarn was actually mangled by Ziggy when he was a kitten. I found it in my living room one day. He had like pulled the yarn out of one of my bins. 
And it was still in a hank. It, it was our skein. It hadn't been caked up yet. And he literally just mangled it to a tangled hot mess. I think in my original, my, my intro to Yarnathon this year, I showed this and how horrible it looked. And I finally was able to un like unravel the whole thing and untangle it. So I was like, you know what? It's already in a cake. We're just going to go ahead and cast on a pair of vanilla socks with this. This poor yarn has gone through enough. It needs to be knit up into some socks. <laughs> and I did mention this, but this is a like a sparkle sock. If you can see the, the sparkly Stellina in there. So yeah, plain vanilla socks there. Next is in this beautiful project bag. This was by the brand Split Yarn. I don't know if she makes bags anymore, but it's like a beautiful box bag. And these, this yarn I've had, I've had wound up for quite some time. This is another pair of, this is going to be another pair of self-striping socks. The pattern I'm going to use is Rose City Roller Socks. It's a very popular pattern that many, many, many people have knit. They're basically like little footy socks. And this is this yarn here, which is a self-striping yarn. This is by the brand Mustache. If you've never checked out Mustache, please do, she's amazing. And the shade is Be Mine. This was actually a skein that I purchased from the DFW Fiber Festival. And it's a, like a, I guess Millens, but it's a short skein. So it only has 73 grams total for both of these. So I went ahead and I wound these up quite a, quite a while ago. By the way, I did not mention this is 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. 75%, 25% Superwash Merino Nylon. This is her, what does she call this? Perfect sock. So anyway, I'm going to knit little footies with this. I've had this in this bag for years. It's finally going to get knit up. Okay, the next pair is in this cute little project bag. I don't, this is by Twisted Fiber Studio. I don't know if she's still around. Again, this, a lot of this is older stuff. This is going to be also vanilla socks, but I'm going to use my hand spun. So this is yarn that I spun from fiber. The original dyer of the fiber was Be Myself. I don't think she's around either. I'm just going to stop saying that. And the shade that this fiber was dyed in is Colorama. So yeah, here is this gorgeous hand spun. Well, you know, pat myself on the back because it's so pretty. But the fiber, the colors are beautiful. So I just wanted to knit some of my hand spun up. Simple socks, toe up. I usually do a, I don't usually do a heel flap. I can't remember the name of the type of heel. If I remember, I'll put it here. But yeah, it's going to be a toe up sock. Yay. Okay, the next sock is in this cute little bag. I mean, they're all cute bags, right? This is going to be the Prairie Spring socks. And the yarn that I'm using is by the brand Western Sky Knits. Here is the yarn that I'm using. This was actually, I had started working on a sock. I'd knit these into like half a foot and I did not like how it was knitting up. So I went ahead and ripped it out and I'm going to try another pattern with this. The, this yarn is her Willow Sport. It's 378 yards and it's 100% superwash merino. I want this skein to shine. Now, my only other thought about this is if this does not work, and I have a caveat around get your craft on here in a minute, but if this yarn and pattern pairing does not work, I am going to try to pair this with some mohair, like solid mohair. I'm thinking purple to see how it ends up knitting up because it's just, it, was there was a ton of pulling and flashing and I typically don't like that. I didn't like how it was knitting up. So we're gonna try it, see how it works. Now, one thing I will say is you don't have to finish all of these projects. You may cast on and be like, no, I don't like this and you can rip it out. 
but the goal is to start a project every day. So I may change my mind and bring in another project in place of this and go ahead with my idea about using a mohair silk blend pairing with this to see what it ends up looking like. But for right now, this is what I have planned for that skein of yarn. Next up, I have another pair of vanilla stripey socks. I have a lot of self-striping yarn. So my goal is I need, a, I like mindless knitting, like smaller mindless knitting projects, especially for whenever I fly, because I'll sit there and I'll watch a movie on the plane and I'll just knit. And I need something that's easy. I don't want to have to look at a pattern. So here's another bag by Split Yarn. It's another box bag. And the yarn that I'm using is something I've had in my stash forever. One of my oldest self-striping yarns. This is by Knitter Knitterly Things. Now she is still around and her self-striping yarn is fabulous. So this is the shade Algae. And yeah, so I want to knit just again, simple vanilla socks, toe up with an afterthought heel. Maybe one day I'll do like a ribbed sock. I don't know. I usually just do stockinette because it's super easy. So here's another skein of self-striping, but I'm doing something different with this one. I'm going to knit these smooth operator socks. So here is the yarn for this. This is again, another Knitterly Things skein of yarn. And this is in the shade Verbena. And I love this project bag. Oh, look at the little pirate of the skulls, you know. I love this. And then the inside is a contrasting pink. The last sock that I'm doing is in this project bag. The little rainbows. And this one is going to be the Vestigial Socks by Beta Jezek. I think that's how you pronounce her name. She is of Hedgehog Fibers, which is a yarn company. I love her yarn. It's beautiful. And this, I think, may be one of my oldest, well, Okay, so my oldest skeins of yarn. And this, this, so this is Sundara Sock and it's in the shade Crushed Cherry, Cherries, Cherry, Cherry. Now this, when I first bought this, like hand dyed yarn was kind of new. You know, like, like this kind of hand dyed yarn was new. I mean, you may have had like solid hand dyed yarn, but this type of kettle dyeing was like brand new. And when I saw this yarn, I was like, Oh my God, that's beautiful. I want, I coveted this yarn so hard. This, in fact, a lot of people covered, coveted this color at the time. And I granted this was like 2007. So a long time ago. And it was, so uh, I mean, so hard to find. Now I look at it, I'm like, it's beautiful, but you know, I, there's a lot of places you can buy yarn like this. Regardless, I need to knit it because I coveted it for so long. I have been hoarding it. I need to knit it. Well, hello, sir. So anyway, I'm knitting. I'm using this yarn. And again, we're going to knit the vestigial socks. I cannot wait. Hopefully it looks pretty. <laughs> okay, those are the socks. Moving on to hats. Where are my hats? I have four hat patterns that I plan on knitting. The first one comes in this really cute like flamingo bag. I freaking love flamingos. And this one is going to be the Gluma Beanie by Krabby Tabby. <laughs> and the yarn that I'm using is another scam. I'm trying to get through my Sundara yarn. This is again by Sundara. This is the shade Caribbean and it's her sock yarn 100% Superwash Merino. And yeah, so this is going to be a very nice lacy beanie. Excited about that one. Hi, Zig. <laughs> Next up, I have two hats that I'm actually knitting for a friend. The first one is going to be in this gorgeous bag. It's a drawstring bag. It's kind of like, it's got little cassette tapes. Retro. So this is going to be the Hannah hat by Blake Ehrlich. And this is again for a friend. And I'm going to use this Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino DK in the shade Tarte. Again, a very popular colorway for her. Is she still dyeing this color? I don't even know. But yeah, this is uh, specifically a hat for where you can wear a ponytail out the back. <laughs> so this is going to be for a friend. Excited about that. And the second 
hat that I'm knitting for a friend is going to be the Latu hat. Now I already knit this one up. So uh, this friend of mine saw it and was like, oh my God, I love that hat. So she asked me to knit her one. And here's a, a camera bag, this cute little camera bag. The yarn that I'm using for this is Metal and Tosh, Tosh DK and the shade Jade. It's this beautiful green colorway. And yeah, this one's going to be, both of these hats I think are gonna be pretty quick knits. And then the last hat that I'm going to knit is in this alley bag. My friend who lives in Seattle, she and I used to kind of get each other owl themed things. Sarah, if you're watching, hey girl, hey. Anyway, I'm going to knit the If Jessica Jones Had a Hat hat. I think this is going to be beautiful. It's a linen stitch I believe which takes a long time to knit up so I decided to go with a really nice drapey fabric or yarn yarn that's going to make a very nice drapey fabric how's that this is by Malabrigo it's their finito kettle dyed pure super fine merino wool and this is just their cream color I actually have two balls of this so if I need more I have more this has 200 yards but linen stitch kind of eats yarn, so I may need more. We'll see. Anyway, I'm excited about this one. I love neutral colored, like, hat. I mean, I love colorful ones, too. But sometimes I find that I get the most use out of, like, neutral colored things. Okay, those are the four hats that I plan on knitting. Now I'm going to go to, like, cowls, scarves, shawls. I don't knit a lot of shawls at all. But if it's a shawl, it's usually, like, a really long shawl that I can use as a, as a scarf. So I have six cowls and or scarves that I plan on knitting. So the first pattern is, or the project is in this beautiful like patchwork bag. I love this one. It's so well made. This is by Whimsy Stitches. He is an amazing bag maker. He also dyes yarn. His bags are fabulous. Oh my gosh, they're so good. I need to go check out his website. Okay, so this cowl this is going to be a cowl this is the millwater cowl it was designed by beth kling and i am using these two skeins of madeline tosh tosh vintage which is 100 percent superwash merino it's a worsted weight yarn and this is in the shade Cousteau. so here's this one i have a little bit of yarn tie there but anyway i have actually knit a millwater before in a gray yarn gray I think it was a Mad Tosh gray like silvery gray colorway and it has gone missing I have no idea where it is I haven't seen it in years so I was like I want to knit another one because I really enjoyed that um it's a long cowl and I double it like loop it twice around my neck so yeah that's what this one's going to be the next one is in this awesome sugar skull bag I freaking love this one Oh, this bag is an Erin Lane bag. I definitely I see her at a lot of uh, fiber festivals. So I will link her down below if I if I have space. I may not have space, but we'll see. The pattern that I'm planning on knitting with this is Dotted Rays by Stephen West. And this is going to, shocker, be the first Stephen West pattern that I knit. I'm not a big fan of his shawls at all. Uh, but this one, I know that it's a simple, like, nothing crazy, like Stephen West shawl. So, and I can wear, it's a shawl that I can wear as a scarf. So here is the yarn that I'm using. This is by the brand Sanguine Griffin, right? The Sanguine Griffin. They are no longer around. But this is her hand-painted sock yarn, 100% superwash merino, in the shade Cleo. So I do have two of these and I'm going to knit the larger Stephen West shawl with this colorway. Yay. I've had that Stephen West project in my queue on Ravelry for a long time. So I'm probably going to knit it up. Next, this one's going to be a slog. But before I go there, here is the bag that I'm using for this one. And does this one have, this one's also an Air Lane bag. The pattern that I'm going to knit with this yarn is Kozu by Kristen Johnson, Kirsten 
John Stone. I think it's John Stone. This is a lace weight yarn. It's also by the Sanguine Griffin. It's her Gaia Lace. Gaia, G-A-I-A, is that how you pronounce that? Lace. Hand painted yarn. It's 40% silk. I'm sorry, 40% cashmere, 60% silk. And this is four ounces. So I have two balls of yarn here. Two balls of, no, two skeins of yarn in this ball. I just wound it together since it's the same colorway. So yeah, this is, this is kind of like one of those mindless uh, watching a movie knits. Sometimes I do find knitting with lace yarn to be a little bit challenging because you, especially on bigger needles, because you have to make sure you're not dropping a stitch or knitting into the stitch underneath, etc. But I love this pattern and I think it's such a beautiful scarf the way it's constructed. So it's kind of like an ethereal scarf. So anyway, yeah, I'm going to we're going to we're going to get it started. So this bag here actually is holding there's more owls and little birdies on this one. This one is holding two skeins of yarn. What I'm knitting with this is the Litmus Cowl by Amy Florence Edwards. And I am actually taking a color, uh, let's see what, like a paint box kit and pairing it with a, another colorway. So the first, the, the kind of the, the main color or the contrast color, whatever, one of the colors is this plucky knitter the plucky knitter yarn this is her primo fingering which is merino cashmere nylon so 75 percent merino 20 percent cashmere five percent nylon and this is in the shade barely birch and i'm going to pair it with this yarn by fiber optic this is her paint box set in the tangerine to ultraviolet colorway i don't know if she still names them this way but fiber optic is still around and she still does colorways like this i purchased a like this had how many 15 mini skeins of 30 yards each i just wound all of them up into a ball i kind of attached them with a knot and so each color is going to be a stripe section and then I will alternate it with this with this yarn here. I can't wait. The next project bag I have is this one more Allie's cute little owls. This is going to be Barley Sugar by Isolde Teague. I showcased my version, uh, my heavily modified version of the Barley Cowl, Barley Sugar Cowl in my Project Yardathon update, my most recent one. So I am going to make another one and I'm going to use this yarn here. This is by the brand A Thing for String. She's local to me and she's amazing. I love, I love the way she dyes yarn. This is her 75% merino, 25% nylon yarn. There's 460 yards in here and the color is Morisot. M-O-R-I-S-O-T. This is gorgeous. And yeah, this is going to be another barley sugar. I have knit two of those and I'm excited to knit a third. I freaking love that cowl and I love the way that I personally have modified it to use fingering weight yarn and it's just a one loop cowl. I love it. And my last cowl is in this really adorable little bag with bicycles. And let's see what's in here. This is going to be the Quilted Lattice Cowl by Debbie Seaton. And the, I don't know why I'm showing the bag again. The yarn that I'm using is Malabrigo. This is their worsted in the shade Uva. So I have two of these that I'm going to use to knit that beautiful quilted cowl, quilted lattice cowl. I think this is going to be stunning, stunning. I cannot wait. <laughs> you see my knitting mojo is like back, back, baby, back. Okay, the next category are mitts, whether it be, most of them are fingerless, I think, fingerless mitts. And I have four of these. So the first one is in this cute little sheepy bag. This is also by Whimsy Stitches. And the yarn that I'm using for this one is another Sundara sock yarn. This is the Flower Studies colorway. She did like, 
limited edition shades in like a series. So this one is Flower Studies number 178. And here is this beautiful color. So this is actually going to be knit for a friend of mine. I wound this yarn up years ago and never cast on. So I'm going to finally do that. This is going to be in the pattern Can Cans. Oh, I don't know who the designer is. Hold on. The designer is Erica Lomax. So again, this is for a friend. I cannot, I'm, I need to, I need to get these done. They need to be done. They've been sitting in this little beautiful project bag for so long. It needs to happen. Next up are the Beeswax Mitts by Amy Vanderlaar. And I'm using this cute little box bag. More owls, as you can see. I love owls. And the yarn that I'm using for this are the, is by Willy Wonka Fibers. This is the Freya DK, which is 100% BFL. And there's and the, it's the shade is Pewter. So here is the yarn. Now, these Beeswax Mitts are freaking adorable. I've knit them before in a gray yarn and I lost one. So I want them back because they were so cute. So it's happening. The third mitt that I have, I'm going to knit it's in this bag. And this is going to be the Pilea Wrist Warmers by Katarina Linhagen. Okay. When I saw the last name and I read it out loud to myself the first time, I, I had a good giggle because all I could think about it, think about was Lynn Hagen from Crazy Stupid Love. All I could think about. Tangent. Okay, so the yarn that I'm using is some yarn that I bought at my first fiber festival ever where I went bananas and bought all the yarn. I've had this since then. This is by the brand Knitting Notions and this is the Classic Merino Super Sock in the shade Berry. Very simple, semi-solid in a purpley, you know, pinky purpley shade. I love this color and I've literally been sitting on this yarn for over 10 years. So, ten, right? Probably. So we're going to knit them up into a pair of wrist warmers. The Pilea wrist warmers. Okay, the last pair of like little mitts. <laughs> this is going to be, oh, wait, let me show you the bag first. Here's the bag. More sugar skulls. And the pattern I'm knitting are the Cloudburst Mitts by Adrienne Gray. And I'm using a gray yarn. This is another yarn by Plucky Knit the Plucky Knitter. This is her Snug Fingering, which is 70% Merino, 20% Cashmere, 10% 10% Alpaca. And the shade is High Cotton. Oh my gosh. I love, this is so soft. She, M Plucky Knitter does mostly, I think, almost exclusively these like solid tonal colors and so it's great for sweaters I mean great for everything really anyway I am excited about these mints okay the last three projects are miscellaneous <laughs> the first one is going to be a dishcloth I have a I have a couple of I think I, this is my only gimme this is a pretty much an easy one. This is grandma's dishcloth and I'm just using some random cotton that I have wound up. I don't even know what cotton this is. So we're just going to use this. Hopefully this is enough. This may be Tahari. Is that the brand? Cotton? Mercerized cotton? So anyway, it's in this cute little box bag. The next project is going to be a weaving project. I am going to bust out my loom, which I haven't done in a very long time. I hope I, don't, I hope I remember how to use it. And I'm going to weave a scarf and I'm going to use some hand spun. This is some of my hand spun. These are singles. The, the dyer of this was Funky Carolina. She's been gone for quite a while. The colorway here is Blast Off. It's a mixed BFL silk blend and there's 460 yards here. So I'm going to make a really, I mean, I'm assuming a beautiful scarf with this. And the last project, we've been here an hour, or I've been here an hour. Hopefully I've been able to cut some stuff out. The last project is going to be a spinning project. I'm going to bust out my wheel. It's been a very long time since I have spun anything. I actually have to get what's on the wheel off between now and then. So I need to spin 
the yarn, the fiber that's kind of sitting around waiting for me. To... Anyway, here is the fiber that I'm going to spin up. This is actually fiber that I dyed a very long time ago, back whenever I was a yarn and fiber dyer. I want to say this is the shade Explosion. That's what I called it. So yeah, I have a bunch of my own hand dyed yarn. Well, mostly fiber, but I do have some yarn and I need to spin this up. So that's the goal. I have no idea how I'm going to spin it. I don't, I don't even know where the tag is. So I don't even know what kind of fiber this is. I'm going to blame Ziggy because he used to drag all of my yarn and fiber out of the bags, etc. I can probably find the tag somewhere anyway. And maybe it's in my stash and Ravelry. Anyway, we're going to spin this up. Those are my 31 projects for Get Your Craft On. If you guys have any questions about anything that I showed you or about the project, please let me know. Also, if you plan on participating in this craziness, leave a comment down below because I would love to include, include you in my description box. I'm going to leave the other lovely ladies that are participating in this with me in the description box down below so you'll get to see them. Please check out their videos because they joined in on the crazy and I am I'm happy that I'm not doing this alone. Now, what I did not mention in my at the beginning of the video is that I plan on I'm probably going to do more regular updates to Project Yarnathon. I'm probably going to combine the two and talk about now that I've talked about the get your craft on crazy pro amount of projects that I'm going to cast on. I'll probably do my an update monthly for Project Yarnathon and just share with you in that mo that that movie. <laughs> That's not a movie. Well, kind of. So I'll be sharing with you in that video how things are going with my cast on stuff. If you want, let me know down below if you want me to, to do like an update on this Get Your Craft On project, like everything that I cast on after the end of January, I'd be happy to do that. So anyway, that is going to be it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you're doing well and staying safe. Please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. But this particular cast that, but cat, and I did some research and realized that this rivalry group has been doing it for 10 years. So I reached out to one of the moderator. What? So I reached out one of because we want to make it make it because <laughs> okay bye